Hello, everybody. Welcome. How are we all? Welcome, welcome. Let's talk about thought entities and elementals and the impact on reality creation. As you are joining us, do say hello so I can say hello back. I will just get the chat open so that I can chat with anyone who joins me live and of course if you are catching the replay please do say hello I always circle back to see who's joined us on the replay and and to say hello to you as well I am so excited to be having this conversation with you today and a huge welcome to our community let me know is, is this the first live that you have caught with me or have you been in my world for a while do let me know I love to love to welcome everybody everybody here and where in the world are you tuning in from i know that we've got people joining us in our helix method community from all around the world so it's so exciting so a huge welcome wherever you are in the world one of the things that i've been up to this week i've been on a lot of podcasts um lately talking about the helix method and you know how it evolved through the way that i was working with my clients and the results that i was getting for myself and my contributions to my clients as well and on monday i was on the reality um check radio show which is a show in new zealand that's had over you know 100,000 downloads so it was super super fun to be getting the helix method word out there hi adrian welcome lovely so excited to see you here Anyway, I highly recommend checking out that show. Um, my episode will be coming out, I think, this Friday or the following Friday. So stay tuned. We'll we'll give you all a heads up as it comes out on our socials as well. Um, but the, the show is fantastic. Natalie has some fabulous guests on that um, as well. And we were talking about the three money blocks that come up for entrepreneurs. And I was sharing some tips on, you know, how you can energetically transmute the money blocks. And as I was reflecting on the conversation, I was thinking about one of the aspects of the Helix Method that often people will mention to, to me is how it balances the, the aspects of the, the healing alongside the manifesting. And, you know, I believe that you, you need both. You truly need both, because if you have an overemphasis on, on one or the, or, or the other, things will start to, to slow down. And one aspect of this is how our how our thoughts are things. They are living beings, living consciousness that hang out in our human Wi-Fi, in our in our auric field. Think of them as little balls of magnets attracting clusters of like frequency to them. And so these energies grow and get bigger and bigger. And there are some really effective ways that we help our clients to transmute these energies fast with the Helix Method. And the Helix Method mentors do this for their clients with their services too as well. So it's it's super exciting stuff. Oh, I can see some more people joining us. Hi, Betty. How are you? Hi, Ali. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. And welcome, everybody, on the replay as well. Do pop a hello in the comments. And as I said, I will circle back and, and say hello. It's so good to, to see you here. Thank you for, for joining me. And for those of you that have been in our world for a while, You'll know this already, you know, and if not, a huge welcome. Our mission is to help self-aware entrepreneurs to live at their highest value so that they can live at their fullest self-expression, to, to live their best life, the life of their dreams. I think that's what we all want, isn't it? And for me, you know, we are we are committed to raising the vibration of the planet, raising the consciousness of the planet, one human being at a time. And we do this by being the number one place for our clients and for coaches to come to for alignment, manifesting, channeling higher realms of consciousness and, and making a bigger impact with with our businesses. Hi, Nads. Hi, Debs. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm so glad that you're happy to be here as well. I'm happy that you're here too. And I am happy that I'm here as well because I'm actually celebrating my seventh year in business. Literally this time, seven years ago, two days ago, I had said goodbye to social services. And I remember closing down the laptop for the final time, you know, after just, just doing this kind of final email. And just, it was feeling so weird, kind of, that email went off and I wouldn't know what had happened to it. And I just had this kind of emptiness as I sort of unceremoniously 
you know, shut everything down, went to the security desk and handed it out, handed the laptop over and my ID badge over to these guys at the desk. I didn't know who they were. They didn't know who I was. And I unceremoniously walked out of the door after 13 years of service. And the whole social services world has, of course, carried on <laughs> without me. But it was such an odd feeling, such a a huge part of my life in terms of my identity, the hours, you know, the amount of time spent, blood, sweat, tears spent pouring into that work that I did there. And huge hours of my life, chunks of time missing out on being with my sons and my soul whispering to me that there was, you know, more to life. And it wasn't until I got burnt out and got shingles and chronic fatigue that I was like, well, hang on a second. <laughs> I'm going to ramp up my action. And ultimately, actually, I valued myself enough to say, I'm betting on myself, I'm going to go for it. And I haven't looked back, you know, they have even asked me, you know, would you like to come back? And I was like, no, thank you. Um, so I'm feeling super grateful for the last seven years. You know, it's just, it's been an incredible journey. I'm so grateful to the version of myself that left and went for it for all the different versions of myself along the way, for, for keeping going when it has felt tough and it has felt uncertain, for having courage to try new business models, to keep developing my skills, you know, for all our fabulous clients who I get to contribute to, for our team who enable me to, you know, focus on all the bits that I love doing so I can work with my clients more and serving our community as well. So I'm feeling the vibes today. I am feeling the vibes. Oh, thank you, Ali. That's so, thank you so much. Ali saying, my last working day was shutting my laptop at home during COVID times. How much has changed since then? Oh my goodness, it has, hasn't it? So much so. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Betty. Oh, oh. And I'm celebrating everybody here because I know everyone has their, their journey as well. So let us know in the comments what has changed for you over the last, you know, five years. Um, what has what are you celebrating as you reflect back along your journey? I know there are some big changes. Adrian, how is the animal communication going? I know you've got some big things in the pipeline as well. Ali is launched her business. What are you up to, Betty? Let us know in the comments and anyone else catching the replay as well. would love to hear. What are you celebrating? Let's celebrate, be in the celebratory vibes as we reflect back to and say thank you to all the different versions of ourselves that we've been along the, along the way. Because we learn so much, don't we, um, as we grow. And for me, you know, this is something that I am really passionate about in terms of requiring more of ourselves and being able to live at a potential greater than the one we originally imagined. You know, I'm on my own journey with this too, and I can really feel a shift within as I've been working, you know, using the Helix method on myself and on my identity and my leadership so that I can help more clients. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about thoughts and thought entities and elementals and the impact that they have on reality creation. So I'm so excited to have this conversation with you whilst, you know, we we, we talk about this and this is something that um, I was realizing that, you know, I talk about this a lot with, with my clients as we're teaching the protocols with our clients in our programs so that our clients can create the reality that they desire with more ease without these pesky thought entities and elementals showing showing things down. But I realized I hadn't spoken about this for a while with, with our community. So I wanted to, to touch on this. Oh, Nicola, sitting listening to you at work on front of my laptop now, wishing I could shut it forever. You can, you absolutely can. That time is coming. It's up to you to choose the date and to create it. It did take me three years to, to get to that point, I would say, Nicola, because there are some pieces to put in the to put in place, aren't they? But it was when I had that bout of shingles and chronic fatigue that I was like, oh, that's enough. There's enough. And of course, what had been slowing me down was the thought entities and the thought elementals in my own energy field that had been, you know, that I was buying into the, you know, buying into the thoughts that I was thinking that they became beliefs. So this is really, really key. This is how it can really they can really slow us down. So you've heard me talk about how every time you think a thought, you're sending out an electromagnetic thought frequency. And this includes thoughts that are questions. You know, I love to live in the energy of a question. So think of these as 
tiny thought entities that have an energy and a form to them. So you think a thought and there it is in its shape, hanging out in your energy field. That might be a little bauble size. It might be a bigger blob or a tiny little blob. They come in all different sort of shapes and sizes and density, depending on how often you have thought the thought. So think of these thought forms as an energetic blend of thoughts and emotions that are floating and permeating the aura of you and your energy field. So the aura of the creator and uh, uh, the person who thought the thought and the energy generated in our, in our in our mind as thoughts and emotions can be sent out through our chakra and our aura system to anybody any place, any person. And this is why we're able to influence each other's energy fields. It's how distance healing works. So this is really important. If we generate positive thoughts and we send positive energy, if we generate negative thoughts, we're sending out negative energy. And as you think about this, you know, think we are we are surrounded by thought forms of energy all the time. And the quality of these will depend on the type of vibration of our thoughts and emotions. So these energetic forms act as magnets to those that are in resonance with it so those other thought forms that are in resonance with it so including people who are thinking similar frequency thought forms you know they might not be exact it's the exact same experiences but they'll be on the same frequency and that's why you know most people with negative energy problems tend to have a very 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 dense field and these fields can then also stay in the places where that person's been whether it's, you know, the work environment, their home environment, you know, wherever they've been. So I call this the imprint of the human Wi-Fi. You might have heard this term. People will call it, you know, the psychic radiation field. And this is the, the thing is, even once that person has left that place, that place is impregnated with their psychic frequency it's psychic contamination does that make sense and then anyone else that's walking into that place picks up those those frequencies and those thought forms does that make sense so you'll probably recognize as you're hearing this is that i invite you to think about is like when have you been to a place where you felt you felt the energy you felt something it's whether it's you know it can be positive you can walk into a place and you're immediately affected by by the vibes in the in the room or the the room is empty, but it feels like the room just had a really good party in it, for example. Or you'll be like, what happened in this room? <laughs> you can just feel like something not very nice happened in that room. Does that make sense? You know, we're picking these things up in our field all the time. And the thing is, you know, sometimes I'll be working with a client and they they may be thinking a thought and we'll be muscle testing on them. Uh, and the, the the thought will be there, but it's not even their thought. It's a thought that they've picked up. And their consciousness has then been impacted by who they have been with. Does that make sense? This is why energy hygiene is just is so important. You know, we have a shower or a bath every day for our physical layer of our body. But we really need to take care of all the layers of our field. Adrian's saying yes, makes makes total sense. Ah, fantastic. Animal communication has been a dream come true. You launched your business a couple of months. The animals are magical and they're humans. Congratulations. Celebrating you. That is so exciting. So exciting. Oh, I love it. Yes. Share with us what you are up to in the comments and anyone on the replay, please do share as well. So I circle back and say hello. And we can carry on the conversation. So the piece I wanted to kind of dive in on because we see the impact of big thought forms, big energy. Think of these as pendulums of energy taking on a life force of their own, really huge clusters of thoughts with similar vibrations all coming together. And you can see this where you have big communities all coming together with all thinking the same thing, creating more and more energy around those thought forms. Does that make sense? And then within these thought forms, you've got programs that you're picking up, intentions of other people, people who have been thinking all the thought forms that have gone into to something that they've created you know if you think about the different societal structures that we live within you can see this within media you know what are we being picked what thought forms are we picking up when we're reading um reading the media alternative media because there'll be a different narrative on there that is being put forward compared to the media again thought forms coming forward that we're picking up Thought forms that are being programmed through movies that we're watching. 
the internet, local communities. Uh, there's just there's so much, isn't there? Climate change agendas. I'm just kind of thinking of some of the big things that you know you might resonate with and go, oh yes, I can really see how there is this huge energy, this big thought form that's kind of gathering momentum around this. Does that make sense? And you can kind of pick up and <laughs> ride ride the wave of it. You know, and the thing is, you know, the more that you think the thought, the more energy there's building up around it, and the momentum then then builds. And this is, you know, whether whether you have, you know, when a person or uh, a group you know this is a family it can be a company an organization it can be a country thinks enough about a certain idea or emotion or an event then all these thoughts are coming together and then attached to those with similar energies and then all of this is imprinting in the etheric field which everyone is tapping into and is is, is part of the collective so when you think about this and kind of think about where your, your little energy bubble is in relation to all of this, and some of these thought forms are getting attached to you energetically. And the thing is, you know, the result of having a negative form, um, thought form attached is that you will find yourself creating more of that, that signature emotion, even if you're trying not to. So when you think you create a thought form, so think of it as a living being that is literally produced by the process of thinking and the thing is the majority of them they're really weak in form their lifespan's really really short you might think it and then poof it, it's gone but the more that you think about a thought the more energy it has around it and this works for the negative thoughts that we have as well you know we know how often something will go round and round in our heads if we're worrying about something the momentum really builds and this is why it really works when we flip it and we put that same energy and intensity that we are capable of, we are all capable of when we're worrying about something and the reality that we create when we're worrying. If we flip it and apply that same intensity to manifesting the love, the abundance, the prosperity, the health that we desire, this is when, as we start to do that, you know, people will say it's like a miracle I can't believe it I'm really surprised being surprised and delighted by what we've created through our manifesting through the thought forms that we've we've created so this makes sense the key thing is you know where a repeated thought or emotion is acquiring enough density that's when it becomes a thought entity and these thought entities this is where you know they have a certain level of consciousness and independence they're always linked to the person who originally thought thought it but they can they can extend out and and um, grow into attachments into other people's fields and these thought entities are usually um are born at the back of the neck and then they'll grow and attach to 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 the so the, they grow to, to the neck of the originator and then they come out from there does that make sense the more the thought entity grows, the more weight that the person's going to feel. And they may start to kind of feel like they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders. And we have that kind of language, don't we? It's like, oh, I've got a real weight on my shoulders. It's probably a thought entity kind of hanging out there. <laughs> Does that make sense? And they attract and grow from new emotions and thoughts of the same vibration. So they're just kind of getting bigger and, and bigger and bigger. Does that does that make sense? Does anyone kind of recognize thinking, yeah, I've, I've felt a thought entity. I know the Helix Method mentors will, will um, resonate with this where they've done work with either with their clients. So do let us know in the comments if it, where perhaps you have any of the Helix Method mentors work with clients and released a thought entity. What happened? Or oh, this might have happened for yourself as well. Um, and how did you feel afterwards? That That I think would be really good to Add in, add into the, add into the conversation um, as well. So the thing is to think of them like they attach themselves like a tick <laughs> to the person who's thought them, and then feed on the emotions of people around around that person, and then can even attach and you know hook onto other people who are in the same vicinity with them, you know. And uh, so, and this is where you know the other language that we use is you know you're affected, you know. The, um, you become the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with because we're all living and uh, being influenced by the thought forms of other people and our thought forms are influencing other people's as well. Does that make sense? Just to share a little story so you can see what I mean about how we're interacting with thought entities each day. So imagine we've got a friend called 
Sally and Sally had been feeling really let's say she'd been feeling really affected by her revenue and her business and she's feeling really sad and and perhaps feeling some regret and then a couple of days have passed by and Sally's let go of the emotion and she started to feel brighter but then after a few days she meets a friend who has experienced something you know something similar and that emotion is that she thought had gone resurfaces and she starts to feel the same sadness and regret and she's like you know why why is this happening and it's it's happened because the thought entity generated and created the thoughts had, had become anchored in the energetic structure for Sally and it was waiting for an opportunity to manifest again so she thought she dealt with the feelings but the thought entity is in the energetic structure and that's that's the bit that Sally needs to let go of to be able to not keep triggering these these emotions and of course these experiences and then attracting them back into her does that make sense and the same you know will happen when we connect with a person that's charged with the thought entity in their aura you know if we vibrate at the same frequency as some thought entity around us we're going to pick up that thought entity and then start to be to be influenced by it and this can happen really quickly you know we're all walking in and out of each other's auras you know could just go on public transport and to think about um, how many auras you've been interacting with as you've been, you know, just going about your your, your day on on public transport. Of 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 course, it's, that's where I'm always like, oh goodness, let's do some some clearing when I uh, when I get when I get home. And this is why you know we can feel so good when we're in communities like this one. And in mastermind groups and group coaching programs where we're with like minded people, you know, our auras are being influenced by the people that we're spending time with. Let me know if this is resonating for you. You know what's popping as we are chatting about this. I can see the agent saying I just had really bad neck pain waking up at someone else's place. I'm curious if this is related now. Oh, yes. We'll do some muscle testing in a minute, Adrian. You can find out. Uh, and saying how experienced several thought entities felt like a massive weight remove when you released it. Oh, yeah, it's huge, absolutely huge. Ali, I'm currently working on thought entities around singing. Sometimes I can sing with ease, and all the time it's a whole different me questioning why. Oh, yes, love it, love it. It's going to be transformational when you have let that let that go. And there's lots of different thought entities, you know, because we can most of the time we're creating them unconsciously and then of course we can create them consciously but some of the ones that let's see if these pop for you in terms of some of the things that you've been talking about um could this be a worry thought entity stress thought entity uh, a controlling thought entity a jealousy judgment we can judge ourselves or we'll be worried that other people are going to judge ourselves and so much more and of course then because we can create them consciously we can create them and use them for the benefit of ourselves. And, and this is what we do within the within the Helix method. One of the methods that we use, which if you've attended a masterclass with us, you'll have benefited from me guiding you through releasing thoughts, beliefs and emotions that you are ready to let go. Imagine those little bubbles of, of energy leaving your field and hooking themselves from the chakras that they're lodged in. And then you, you'll have had me guide you through creating new thoughts. And as we repeat, those thoughts that we want, we are building up the energy around them, creating positive, positive thought entities. And this is where, you know, rituals, prayers, invocations do this and we use them for our own benefits. And in terms of the Akashic record, every thought, emotion and belief and experience that we've had is held in your Akashic record, including all the negative ones, <laughs> including all the positive ones. And so everything that we're creating at any moment is is uh, imprinted into your Akashic record. So in terms of the other piece around how these grow, in addition to the thought entities, we have thought elementals. So you may hear me refer to these as negative elementals. If you think of the elementals as energy beings, some elementals are energy parasites. Think of addictions as elementals, smoking, alcohol, drugs, gambling. These elementals are hooked into the different chakras and they're self-generating more momentum because they're attracting like frequency to them. Does that make sense? And Anne, did I answer your question? Let me know if there's another question that evolves off, off the back of that. You know, whenever we're 
helping clients with this aspect as a as a helix method mentor we'll be thinking about transmuting the elementals and showing the client how to do this you know working with the different energetic structures in their human wi-fi to be able to to clear the thought entities and elementals that are creating the the addictions yes eating addictions yeah exactly so I tell you what, let's do this together now. So I'm going to invite you to think about what have you been thinking about recently? So pop it in the comments. I know Ali was saying about singing. Adrian was recognizing you were feeling. Um, how did you describe it? Uh, something had bubbled up this morning for you. I'm trying to find your note there. Um, back, back neck pain, bad neck pain. Okay, so let's gather what you've been thinking about in relation to whatever is going on in your life right now. And then to think, does it feel like, what does it feel like? Let's just get curious. Does it feel like worry? Does it feel like self-judgment, comparison, stress? What does it, what does it feel like? And then what we'll do is we're going to activate our connection with our higher self and then let's muscle test to see if you're holding a an entity a thought entity in relation to the thing that you're thinking about right now and then we will release it at a high level does that sound good all righty so so you might be thinking about finances health your business Alrighty, so let me guide you through this. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to increase your life force energy by breathing in for four, holding for four, and breathing out for eight. And to do this three times with the intention of activating your connection to your higher self. So just to bring your awareness to your soul star chakra, which is about 18 inches above your head. And it's just the intention of, okay, I'm just bringing my awareness there. And then I invite you to Breathe in for four, hold for four, and breathe out for eight. And just to do that at your own pace three times. And then we'll do the invocation. And every time we say the invocation, we're thinking it, we're adding the energy to the thought form. Increasing the energy around that and the intention of our connection with the higher self speaking to all levels of my consciousness i am creating a clear channel of communication and manifestation between my subconscious conscious and higher self so that they are 100 percent connected and in perfect alignment and all working towards my highest path and purpose thank you thank you thank you Alrighty, from this place, I'm going to invite you to muscle test. So I think I know everyone on live has been with me before. So you've done this muscle testing with me. But just in case anyone's watching the replay and they're like, what is she talking about? I'm going to just invite you to muscle test using the sway technique. So this is where you just simply stand up and you're going to say something um, to see if your body says it gives you a forward sway which is a yes or a backward sway if it's a no if you've never done this before then I invite you to do a baseline test first to just test it with your name so I'd say my name is Louisa Havers and then see if I go forwards or backwards um, and I'd hope I go forwards because that is a yes and my name is Louisa Havers and then I would do it with something I know not to be true so I'd say something like you know my name is Donald Duck and then I will go backwards and the best way to do it, and just as a bit of a recap for anyone who's like, I can't remember how to do it, is if you stand up with your feet hip width apart, knees slightly soft, hands down by your sides so and not in your pocket, and then just to close your eyes so that you're going as if you're going within, like you're going to do a meditation. And then just become aware of your chest going up and down as you're breathing, so bringing your awareness to your breath. And then I'm going to invite you to muscle test and to say... So we'll do this with the example of, have I got a worry entity? Just see if you go backwards or forwards. Have I got a stress entity? Have I got a self-judgment entity? Just see how your body responds to you saying these questions. And let us know in the comments whether you get a yes or a no. Did you get a yes for 
all of them? Did you get a no for all of them? And as you're doing this, one of the key things to just be really aware of and to pay attention is to notice how this feels in your body as you sway forwards or backwards. Do you have any sensations that change? Or does it just feel the same? Do you have anything that you're aware of around the back of your neck? Because we've been talking about thought entities. Or perhaps do you feel anything in any of the chakras? I got a yes for all of them. We're going to get rid of them. Yay! <laughs> You're in the right place. What can you see in your mind when you think about this thought form or this, this entity? We've got a, a worry for it. Yes, stress and self-judgment. No, self-judgment stronger than stress. Okay, all righty. So I'm going to use the language of releasing the, the worry entity. Um, and then you can bring in the other language that you want to along the way. So we've got, yes, yeah, so let's do the worry one because I think everyone has has uh, has got a yes on that one. All righty, okay. So you feel rushed. Okay, so that's really key to pay attention to how this is feeling in your body. So you're bringing your awareness to it. So that allows you to make that connection consciously with the subconscious as you let it go by recognizing that feeling is to do that's body sensation, that somatic sensation is to do with that thought. Alrighty, okay, so I'm going to just invite you just to start to breathe in for four and breathe out for four. Just to start to fill your heart up with, with love. Notice how this is feeling in your body. And then I'm going to invite you to say this out loud. I'm ready to release this worry entity. I release this from all dimensions, planes, times, and all levels of consciousness. Just taking a nice deep breath in and out. Just staying with this, noticing how this feels in your body, breathing in for four, breathing out. And just to imagine for a moment that you have a beautiful light, white, green light coming down from your soul star chakra over your aura, filling up your entire body and your aura with light, white, green light. And then I'm going to invite you to say this in your mind's eye. So you're literally, you're thinking it, you're creating a thought entity. And just to focus on your breath. So I'll say it out loud so that you can just literally follow along and repeat it in your mind's eye. I'm ready to release this worry entity. I release this from all dimensions, planes, times, and levels of consciousness. Just take a nice deep breath in and out. I'm ready to release this worry entity. I release this from all dimensions, planes, times, and all levels of consciousness. Notice how you're feeling. Have the sensations stayed the same? Have they got worse? Have they have they moved? Let us know in the comments. How is your subconscious speaking to you through your body? Any memories coming to mind? Any new sensations? Or does it feel the same? Or do you feel lighter? And then you can validate that the entity has gone by simply saying, I have released the worry entity and you'll sway forwards if it's true. If for any reason you sway backwards, just repeat that again and repeat the releasing again. But for the purposes of us doing this together now, we're going to move into the next piece, which is where you're changing your reality, where you can consciously create a thought form. And we're going to increase the energy around it to create a thought entity. So we're bringing the, the form of thought and feeling to, together. Ali's releasing it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alrighty, so I'm going to now invite you to bring your heart again into a coherent energy state by breathing in for four and breathing out for four. And just to fill up your heart with love and that smiling madly lol yes gone yes that's making me smile too oh awesome so exciting Alrighty, so breathing in for four and then breathing out for four and as you're doing that just invite you to be aware of your heart chakra 
And to be intentional, just to say to yourself, I'm filling up my heart chakra with love. My heart chakra is getting bigger and brighter, bigger and brighter, bigger and brighter, filling it up with more and more love. Okay. And then as you do this, then to say out loud and follow along with me, we're going to fill up your heart and align you to divine love. So if the words don't resonate, change them so they resonate for, for you, um, but you can follow, follow my lead if it resonates. I'm ready to allow myself to feel and to align to divine love. I lead with love. I allow this across all dimensions, planes, times, and levels of consciousness. Just taking a nice deep breath in and out. And then saying this silently in your mind's eye, I'll say it out loud so you can follow along. I'm ready to allow myself to feel and align to divine love to lead with love. I allow this across all dimensions, planes, times, and all levels of consciousness. Nice deep breath in and out. Staying with this frequency so you're building more momentum and energy around this thought entity that you're creating. I'm ready to allow myself to feel and align to divine love. I lead with love. I allow this across all dimensions, planes, times, and all levels of consciousness. Feel your heart chakra getting bigger and brighter, bigger and brighter, bigger and brighter. Your auric field is getting bigger and brighter, bigger and brighter, bigger and brighter. And as you allow yourself to enjoy and feel this feeling, let us know in the comments when you're ready, how this feels in your body. Are you feeling lighter? What are you noticing? What is your intention for what you are creating in your reality today? Just to take a moment of your intention for today and pop that, pop that in the comments so we can witness you as well. Oh, Adrian, that's amazing. I got so many urges to stretch and could feel my body opening up. I also remember my birth. I thought of the C-section when I was born two weeks early and born. End of December, so the beginning of January brought me there. How fitting. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, I love, love what comes through. This is so exciting. So this is just one of our ways to transmute and create thought entities. You know, we've done it as a high level in a group today, of course. And you can go so much deeper in our group programs or working one one on one with you thank you so much for joining me today oh and that's fantastic eagerness to bring in clients impacting lives you are ready yes 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 oh thank you for joining me today i have loved sharing my reflections on thought entities and elementals and how they generate and impact our field and the reality that we create you know, and how we can use this very aspect within the Helix Method to consciously create thought entities that will serve us and our reality creation with our healing and manifesting rituals. I would love to hear what's popping for you, what's resonating. Ah, oh, tears of release. That's awesome. You're welcome, Debs. And I would love to know, you know, how do you perceive thought ent entities impacting your reality creation? Ali's saying I felt an opening and feel floaty and light when I think about singing heavy energy is gone awesome thank you louisa looking forward to lionsgate portal next week yes to cut you coming to that fantastic if you want your invite to the lionsgate you haven't got it then dm me and we'll pop over the links you can come and join us for that as well adrian ah uh, thank you so much louisa that was divine so enlightening and healing you are welcome you are so welcome thank you so much for joining me and for everyone who is on the replay as well thank you for joining us I'd love to give you a heads up if it's OK to invite you to the Helix Method certification program. We are on a mission. We really are to help people master their reality creation and to help more practitioners to have faster results with their clients. 
We are welcoming in new clients. Some of you will be joining us because you want to do this just for yourself as a gift for yourself to change your energy and to change your life. And others, you know, you'll be joining because you want to add this as a service and a revenue stream to your business or to start a business and to have an energy coaching business with the Helix Method. We start the live coaching on the 21st of September. We're welcoming in new clients and students now so that you can ease yourself into the digital recordings before our live coaching starts. And, you know, come, come and join us in our private community. Come and hang out with us over the summer. I will teach you how to master energy psychology and reality creation to create fast, predictable results anytime you want without having to spend hours and hours on writing up case studies or writing a thesis. Together, you'll master energy psychology with a complete toolkit and framework that you can use with your own clients within 60 days or less. That's so that you can rapidly create change in your clients and increase your monthly revenue. Just imagine being able to collapse timelines, healing, transgenerational, past life, collective consciousness, soul level, core beliefs, emotions, and know for certain that your clients are actually going to get results and to have a higher level of transformation that's going to, that will hold and your clients will be able to then take action towards their goals. They're going to finally create the life that they, you know, they dared to dream. And you'll have confidence in knowing that you, you don't have competition in the marketplace because what you're offering is, is so extraordinary. And I just love ha seeing all the mentors um, celebration posts in the in the Facebook group where they share the wins that they've had with their clients. It's really fun to, to celebrate with them. So what will be up to you'll master foundational and advanced energetic techniques, including how to read your client's energy, working with advanced energetic structures for healing and raising consciousness and healing with holograms and colors, mastering reality creation and advanced energy kinesiology so that you can show your clients how to say goodbye to the subconscious blocks in, in their nervous system and to create exponential results. So you'll gain the ability to transform limiting patterns and blockages rapidly for your clients instead of them having to spend hours and hours of time doing inner work or having to kind of work through their their resistance so you'll be able to highlight and work somatically and energetically with your clients so that they really master energetics and reality creation and you'll have powerful frameworks for common client issues so you know what to do when your client is showing up in contraction and how to help them through that and training how to work directly with their energy and helping them to shift beyond the things that have been holding them back so they can have that success that they desire in life and you'll also have the license to use three programs that you can just take and use in your own business to elevate your client's prosperity so they're focused on self-love and confidence health and well-being and wealth consciousness these are the three big things that everybody wants to improve in their life and so all of all of that gives you an in, an intuitive service that you can offer for the rest of your life and to also stay in alignment and to make manifesting inevitable for yourself so we've got five spots so reach out now and i'll share all the juicy details um, i've just got them all in a google doc for you i'll pop it over to you in, in messenger so you can just have a read through whilst you're in your own energy and then you just let me know that you're in We've got you covered with some incredible bonuses that will serve you um, in supporting you growing your business. So these are a huge asset, whether you're actually whether you're new to business or a seasoned business owner as well, and you're developing your, your skill set. So we've got some incredible bonuses to support that aspect um, for you as well. And if you're paying in full, you get a, one of the bonuses is you get a private one to one session with me as well. Um, so I'm super excited to see who's stepping forward for those. Um, we've got four payment options so you can choose the one that works for you. Um, and if you want to secure your place with a deposit, you can make your first payment now and then we can agree the, the next payment date. So we can do that, too. Let's just have a chat in Messenger so we can figure out what's most aligned for you. Or we can jump on a you know a quick connect call and um, we'll take it from there. So just uh, DM me and let me know, say I'm interested and I'll pop over the invitation with all the juicy savings. You can currently save up to 40 percent, which is huge. Um, and then we can have a have a chat. And if you have a, a question, I can answer it. Um, and my intention, you know, with our conversation is just to help you to make an aligned decision for you either way. So whichever way it is for you. All righty. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that this has served you. I will circle back to see who has watched the replay and to answer any questions. And until next time, sending you all lots and lots of love. Take care. Bye bye.